All right, here we are. This is the uh, second installment or second video of uh, where I'm covering each of the pumps in our fleet. So I did one with our little 24 meter Z-Boom. Uh, next logical step would be the VS70 line pump. So this one here is a 2004 Putzmeister VS70 PTO driven. Uh, we have had this since brand new. Uh, this actually was my pump when it was brand new. I had the, uh, the pleasure of breaking it in. So this is on the GMC T7500 truck. I believe in the US set, or in the, in the US rather, uh, they market these as uh, Isuzu, but it's the same thing. Uh, this one is the Isuzu powertrain. So it's got the uh, Isuzu engine and six speed manual transmission. Truck is actually pretty good. Uh, what I like about it, it turns super, super tight. Um, what I don't like about it is we've had to replace the dashboard on it at least once. Uh, electrical can be a little, a little funky on these. Parts supply can be a little bit funky too. Uh, but as far as how they operate, they're actually quite, quite good. Pump unit itself, VS70, seven inch material cylinders. It will do shock crate. It's not great at it, but it will do it. Uh, but for your average basement floor is residential work. It kind of is like the perfect size pump kit. So what we keep on here is, let's start with the hose. I like to lay my hoses out side to side rather than looping them all the way around so I don't have to uh, pick stuff from the bottom. So I keep all my two and a half inch hose on this side. Keep 175 feet of two and a half. Right, 175, maybe 150 a day, sometimes 175. But yeah, we got 150 right now. Then the three inch hoses I do loop around because we rarely use those. So I only keep 320 footers, so 60 feet. Oops, from this side to that side. We also keep five lengths, five 10 foot lengths of three inch steel pipe on the lower level here. This rack is something that we custom made. It actually works out quite handy. It's got the flip down sideboards. So you can access that stuff in there. Like so, like so, easy peasy. And then we use two inch hose a lot. We've got pretty forgiving mixes here. So we carry a lot of two inch hose. So we got 225 feet of two inch line we carry on this. And that all loops on this side. Here's the three inch I was talking about that does loop all the way around. Once again, rarely used. Um, this is just so much easier for getting the hoses on and off the truck. You're not flinging them over, running to the other side, wrapping them around. This is just way, way easier. It's the way that I prefer it. We keep uh, 50 feet air line. Two inch blowout cap, three inch blowout cap, electric grease gun, which is Cadillac, and a good old manual grease gun for backup, chipping gun, retarders, some wheel polish, stuff like that. Nothing too fancy. Around the other side. Around the other side we have a bunch of three inch clamps, a couple extra four inch clamps. Bunch of two and a halves, bunch of twos. I like them in these little Tupperware containers, keeps them organized. I color code them, but the paint only lasts so long. Two inches yellow, two and a half is green, red is three inch. It's helpful when you're on a job site and you've got laborers helping you out and you just yell what color clamp you want. It makes it easier for them to figure out. A couple of my favorite things, super handy. Concrete pumper caddy. I've had these in a few of my videos. These were uh, a very good purchase. I'd actually like to get a couple more of these. What else do we got here? What else, what else, what else? It's your standard stuff. Hopper banging out bar, a couple shovels, nothing crazy. A little tray up here for some extra stuff. My recirculation snorkel. I gotta wait for concrete. I'll throw this guy on. Works really, really well for hammering the mud around through. And it keeps some, uh, some grout up in there. But most of the time we just prime with bentonite. You can see the PVC irrigation pipe here that uh, stems back from the days when we would throw the hoses or feed the hoses over to the other side of the pump and wrap them around. But as you can imagine, what you'd always have is whatever size hose you wanted was inevitably on the bottom and whatever you didn't want was on the top and it was a pain in the butt. So this is how I did it like it way, way better that way. Off the back end, we adapted these chains here when we're pumping. We wrap these chains around to secure the reducers. If there ever was a failure, 
keeps the mixer driver safe, keeps this from, from blowing off the back of the pump and hurting somebody. We also hang, if I can do this with one hand, spin it around, this mat here. Hey Roger, good, good. We also hang that off the back like so. Nice 40 foot water hose. So I'm gonna reach around every corner of the truck and wash the truck on site if I need to. Or if I need to wash my hoses 40 feet away from the pump, I have that option too. So, yeah, so in total here on this thing, we have uh, 100 feet of three, 110, 150 of two and a half, so 260, and 250 of uh, two inch, so over 400 feet of line. Pretty well equipped for most any job. And this one is air brakes, so it's got the, uh, the air outlet, which is nice for if you gotta chip your hopper out or for blowing out hoses. Speaking of which, that's the other thing I keep in here. Even though we have air on the truck, this is nice for certain situations to have, to have, to have my little Milwaukee battery power compressor. It's great for if you want to blow the hoses back into the truck. I just walk this out to the end of the line, crack the air on, throw the pump in reverse, suck everything right into the hopper. Easy peasy. And one thing I do like about this truck, dual fuel tanks. This thing holds so much fuel, you can run pretty much, well, almost all week on, uh, on one trip to the fuel station, so. Which is nice. So anyhow, that's it, that's pump number two. 2004 Putzmeister VS70. Um, this thing has been an absolute workhorse for us. We've pumped a lot, lot, lot of concrete with this thing. With fairly minimal maintenance. Uh, I think around 15,000 engine hours, we had to redo the top on the uh, top end on the engine. A lot of that was because uh, we weren't uh, on top of maintenance as far as draining the, the water out of the fuel water separator. And it, uh, corroded some of the injectors and there were some other adverse effects related to that but aside from that it's been really good i think we've replaced the material cylinders on this thing one time in its entire life and i believe it's still on the original s tube even i think i think i think it is so anyhow thanks for watching like share subscribe times three putzmeister vs70 pto would I go with a PTO in today's modern times? I probably would. The reason why I say that is pony driven uh, pumps have gotten so expensive now that they're required to have the tier four emissions. Uh, you pay so much money for having that second engine. I think I would definitely, almost certainly go PTO driven. Prior to tier four emissions requirements, I was probably leaning towards the pony motor. Um, but I think in today's day and age, I think this is the way to go. Fortunately, this one is pre-emissioned, so no headaches. That's it. That's all. Over and out.